This video goes through a few tricks for simplifying expressions with radicals in them. Recall that this notation means the nth root of x. So this notation here means the cube root of 8, the number that when you cube it, you get 8. That number would be 2. When we write the root sign without a little number, that just means the square root. So the 2 is implied. In this case, the square root of 25 is 5, since 5 squared is 25. Let's start by reviewing some rules for radical expressions. First, if we have the radical of a product, we can rewrite that as the product of two radicals. For example, the square root of 9 times 16 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times the square root of 16. You can check that both of these evaluate to 12. Similarly, it's possible to distribute a radical sign across division. The radical of a divided by b is the same thing as the radical of a divided by the radical of b. For example, the cube root of 64 over 8 is the same thing as the cube root of 64 over the cube root of 8. And you can check that both of these evaluate to 2. You have to be a little bit careful, though, because it's not okay to distribute a radical sign across addition. In general, the nth root of a plus b is not equal to the nth root of a plus the nth root of b. And similarly, it's not okay to distribute a radical across subtraction. If you're ever in doubt, you can always check with simple examples. For example, the square root of 1 plus 1 is not the same thing as the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1. The right side evaluates to 1 plus 1 or 2, and the left side is square root of 2, an irrational number. The second expression to show that that fails, I don't think it'll work to use the square root of 1 minus 1. It'll actually hold in that case, but I can show it's false by using, say, the square root of 2 minus 1, which does not equal the square root of 2 minus the square root of 1. You might notice that these rules for radicals, the ones that hold and the ones that don't hold, remind you of rules for exponents. And that's no coincidence. Because radicals can be written in terms of exponents. For example, if we look at the first rule, we could rewrite this. The nth root of a times b is the same thing as the 1 over nth power. And by exponent rules, I can distribute an exponent across multiplication. And so this radical rule can be restated completely in terms of an exponent rule. Similarly, the second rule can be restated in terms of exponents as a over b to the 1 over n is equal to a to the 1 over n divided by b to the 1 over n. We can use the relationship between radicals and exponents to rewrite a to the m over n. a to the m over n is the same thing as a to the m with the nth root taken. It's also the same thing as the nth root of a, all taken to the nth power. To see why that's true, think about exponent rules. So a to the m over n is the same thing as a to the m taken to the 1 over nth power. That's because when we take a power to a power, we multiply exponents, and m times 1 over n is equal to m over n. But a 1 over nth power is the same thing as an nth root, and therefore this expression is the same thing as this expression. And that proves the first equivalence. The second equivalence can be proved similarly by writing a to the m over n as a to the 1 over n times m. Again, this is, works because when I take the power to the power, I multiply exponents. 1 over n times m is the same thing as m over n. But now, these two expressions are the same because the 1 over nth power is the same as the nth root. One mnemonic for remembering these relationships is flower over root. So flower is like power, 
and root is like root, so that tells us we can write a fractional exponent. The m becomes the power, and the n becomes the root in either of these two orders. Now let's use these rules in some examples. If we want to compute 25 to the negative 3 halves power, well, first I'll use my exponent rule to rewrite that negative exponent as 1 over 25 to the 3 halves power. Next, I'll use the power over root mnemonic to rewrite this as 25 to the third power square rooted or as 25 square rooted to the third power. I wrote the twos there for the square root for emphasis, but most of the time people will omit this and just write the square root without a little number there. Now I could use either of these two equivalent expressions to continue, but I'd rather use this one because it's easier to compute without a calculator. The square root of 25 is just 5. 5 cubed is 125. So my answer is 1 over 125. If I tried to compute the cube of 25 first, I'd get a huge number. In general, it's usually easier to compute the root before the power when you're working without a calculator. Now let's do an example simplifying a more complicated expression with, with exponents in it. I want to take the square root of all this stuff, and since I don't really like negative exponents, I'm first going to rewrite this as the square root of 60x squared y to the 6th over z to the 11th. So I'll, I'll change that negative exponent to a positive exponent by moving this, this factor to the denominator. Now when you're asked to simplify a radical expression, that generally means to pull as much as possible out of the radical sign. To pull things out of the square root sign, I'm going to factor my numbers and try to rewrite everything in terms of squares as much as possible. Since the square root of a square, those two operations undo each other. So I'll show you what I mean. First, I'll factor 60. So 60 is going to be 2 squared times 3 times 5. And I'll just copy everything over for now. Now I'll break things up into squares as much as possible. So I've got a 2 squared times 3 times 5. I've already got an x squared. I'll write the y to the 6 as y squared times y squared times y squared. And I'll write the z to the 11th as z squared times z squared, I guess, 5 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times 1 extra z. That should add up to z to the 11th if I add all those exponents together. Now I know that I can distribute my radical sign across multiplication and division, so I'll write this with a zillion different radicals here. And every time I see the square root of something squared, I can just cancel those square roots and the squares out and get what's, what's left here. So, so after doing that cancellation, I get 2 times the square root of 3 times 5 times x times y times y times y over z times itself, I guess, 5 times, times the square root of z. And now I can clean that up with exponents. I'll write that as the square root of 15, I guess, 2 times the square root of 15 times x times y cubed over z to the fifth, the square root of z. I'm going to leave this example as is. But sometimes people prefer to rewrite radical expressions without radical signs in the denominator. That's called rationalizing the denominator. I won't do it here, but I'll show you how to do it in the next example. This example asks us to rationalize the denominator. That means to rewrite as an equivalent expression without radical signs in the denominator. To get rid of the radical sign in the denominator, I want to multiply my denominator by square root of x. But I can't just multiply the denominator willy-nilly by something unless I multiply the numerator by the same thing, so that I'm just multiplying my expression by 1 in a fancy form and I don't change the value of my expression. Now if I just multiply together numerators, 3x square root of x, and multiply denominators, square root of x times square root of x is the square root of x squared, square root of x squared is just x. 
Now I can cancel my x's from the numerator and denominator, and my final answer is 3 times the square root of x. I rationalized my denominator, and in the process, got a nicer looking expression. In this video, we went over the rules for radicals, and we simplified some radical expressions by working with fractional exponents, pulling things out of the radical sign, and rationalizing the denominator.